Sheriff John Bunnell. In the past year, we've been to police agencies across the country and around the world to bring you the most powerful and dramatic footage available. These agencies want you to know what they're facing in the fight against crime. So get set. Tonight, you're going to find out just how tough that fight is. Lancaster, California. Squealing tires, wailing sirens, and the thunder of chopper blades invade a peaceful high desert community. California Highway Patrol units are in pursuit. These are two suspected house burglars in the vehicle, and we also understand the vehicle may be stolen. Okay, he's going into a dead-end street. I don't know where they're going to go here. They continue off-road. A frightened child playing on a bicycle scrambles to get out of the way. It appears that they've got an air compressor in the back, which is now being bounced around like a toy. Uh, it's a good thing there's not a person back there. Oh, okay, they're back on the street. They race toward an intersection. The light is red. They're going to run this red. Oh, there's a car there. Oh, my God. They just got hit. T-bone accident. Uh, unbelievable. They're still going. A pregnant woman never sees the oncoming thieves. She and her unborn child are all right. But officers realize that the suspects are now headed back toward the residential area. They have to shut these guys down and fast. Okay, suspects are going to do a left turn here. CHP from behind them. Wait a minute, it didn't work. They got across anyway. But the truck's left front tire is now damaged. It disintegrates and pieces of rubber go flying. Okay, he's turning right. He's turning right. He can't get any traction. He's going off the road. And he stalled. Wait, wait. Okay, the, he seems to be stuck on some kind of a wire. Passenger foot bail. He's running. The truck is free. Oh, unbelievable. He jumped back into the moving truck. The truck gets caught on a support wire for the telephone pole. As the driver desperately tries to get free, his partner runs off. Every man for himself. But as soon as the truck gets free, he gladly gets back on board. What he does next is unbelievable. Okay, he appears he's, he's reaching up into the passenger side door. He's standing, oh my God, he's actually trying to get back inside the truck. And he did, he did it, he's in. Knowing the stolen compressor could crush a limb, he carefully maneuvers back towards the cab at 65 miles an hour. It's amazing that these guys are able to keep going. That left front tire is just shredded. You can see it's just completely gone. Back on pavement, the suspects again head toward town. Knowing how vulnerable the truck is, officers waste no time trying to end this chase. The truck is hit again, and it's still going. Here comes CHP. CHP, the tire is completely off now. They're pushing the truck sideways down the street. They are not going to let these guys go. Wait, foot bail, foot bail. Same suspect, now running, running from the scene. Another unit speeds up to catch the fleeing suspect. The man leaps at the wall, hurling himself over. These officers are right behind him. Over the wall, suspect cutting through these yards. Another wall now. He's over that one. Here comes an officer. It's like an obstacle course. Okay, another wall. And okay, here's a plainclothes officer. Almost didn't make it. Suspect now behind a garage. There he is. Okay. Uh, he's still running. Jumping over a wire. He falls. He's falling. Officer hung up on the wire fence. He's given up. He's had enough. His face is now in the dirt. Spread eagle. Code 4. This case is over. Both suspects are local. Natives of this small desert town. But in one day's work, they managed to rack up some very big-time charges, including burglary, grand theft auto, and felony hit-and-run. The chase lasted almost two hours, and though they risked their lives over and over, these homeboys didn't get too far. Ironically, they were captured less than three blocks from where this chase began. Armed robbery. It's every convenience store clerk's greatest fear. Some feel their only defense is to stay armed and ready. San Diego, California. Norman Mansour ran a convenience store for 18 years. His regular customers knew him as a mild-mannered shopkeeper. But he always carried a revolver on the job, just in case. One day, it saved his life. A customer approaches with a bottle of wine. When Mansour asks for ID, the customer's partner pulls out a gun. The crook shoots first. And Mansour grabs his snub-nosed 38. Fires from cover while the crooks shoot blindly. The criminals run, 
never hitting Mansoor with a single shot. Last one here. Four behind me. The brave shopkeeper dodged nine rounds while firing five himself. Camden County, Georgia. Sheriff's vehicles pursue a two-bit car thief in a white Monte Carlo. But this chase will rewrite the book on high-speed pursuits. A team of three deputies are right on his tail, ready to corral this runaway felon. Seen from another cruiser, the pursuit becomes a battle when the suspect uses his car as a fuel-injected weapon. Charging into the opposing lane, narrowly missing cars, screaming through the night at 110 miles an hour. As the chase reaches a road construction area, the deputies prepare to make their move. But what happens next is so unprecedented, they're shocked and amazed. What appears to be an unmarked police car jams itself into the pursuit. It is actually a second stolen car, acting as a wedge between the cops and the fleeing white sedan. Inside this brown caprice is the suspect's partner, determined to help his buddy get away. They were working together. We weren't even expecting it out of the blue. It's one of those unexpected things that happen. Metal meets metal as the deputy tries to ram him off the highway. The brown sedan is inches from skidding off the road. Incredibly, the driver yanks the car back under control, barely missing a traffic pylon. With the second thief running interference, his partner in the Monte Carlo has a real chance of getting away. The deputy has to take out the Caprice. That means putting his Crown Victoria against a vehicle so powerful and heavy, it is often used as a cop car. Again, chassis grind. But the plan backfires. I was banged up pretty good. I went careened off into the woods 250 some odd feet this is what the deputy sees as his car hurdles off the road amazingly the officer escapes major injury i'm 10 4 i am 10 4. meanwhile the other deputies are relentless bearing down even harder on the fleeing vehicles the suspect can't shake the cops and the speed is too much for him to handle the caprice rockets into a ditch throwing up a shower of rocks and dirt as it flips over and over and over. Seen again, it's amazing that this automotive cartwheeling leaves the suspect with nothing worse than bruises. Honor among thieves comes at a high price. In the chaos, the thief in the Monte Carlo gets away. But his partner will spend five years in jail paying for his buddy's freedom. As for police, they are given a wild introduction to a new breed of chase. Tag Team Pursuits. In Sumter County, South Carolina, Corporal Pat Riley's number one concern is making sure his peaceful southern town stays just that, peaceful. You try to prepare yourself every day you go out there. But you never know what's going to happen. But on a seemingly average day in 1996, that peace was shattered. Paul came out saying that it was a vehicle headed south on 15 North into the town of Sumter running vehicles off the road at a high rate of speed. He has no idea that behind the wheel of this white sedan, a mentally unstable man is in the throes of a psychotic episode. By the time Riley catches up, he can see the suspect is a menace to everyone on the road. The almost 1053 vehicle. Why would anyone risk so many lives, including his own? Even the suspect seems to have no idea. Appears to be a white man. He's putting his hands up in the air like he doesn't know what's going on. Well, at the time, we didn't know why he was driving. The, the speeds he was, we were traveling anywhere at speeds at 100, 110 miles an hour. Another unit lays down a stop stick. The driver swerves around the spike, but he can't hold the road. Okay, he's 10 15, he's 10 15. 
unbelievably, after three heart-stopping revolutions, the suspect regains control. Negative base back on the road. I thought it was over. I thought it was, and I was really astonished he was back on the road again. Again, the chase is on. 10-10, he got it back on the road. The driver avoids a second stop stick, but a third one takes out a tire. The units be advised, he just went through another, another stick. Even with a flat, this suspect madly accelerates into the town center. For a moment, it looks like Corporal O'Reilly has lost the white vehicle. But he catches up, just as additional units join the pursuit. Next to this gas station is a daycare center. The cop in the lead sees the chase is headed toward the children and makes sure it goes no further. And he crashed into an X rod. With no bystanders in the way, the officer has to make his move. But now the whole gas station is a bomb, waiting to go off. The first priority is evacuating the terrified children. But the driver remains in his car. Too deep in his own madness to even care about the flames engulfing his vehicle. Gas tanks on fire. Riley and the other cops now have to save the life of the same man they've been chasing for miles. They even brave explosions to rescue him. The cruiser bulldozes the car to safety. But there is still the threat of a massive explosion. Unbelievably, once the car rolls free, the suspect tries to keep running. He's taking off again. He had a reflex. I think he hit the accelerator and tried to speed away once again. But the police have learned to expect the unexpected with this guy. They quickly surround the car. The door handles are blistering hot from the flames. So they try more direct methods. Only a hundred feet away, the flaming gas pumps remind the officers they're running out of time. Inside the car, the disturbed man struggles. He tries to yank Riley through the shattered window. It takes nearly a half a dozen cops to drag the man out of the car, and even more to cuff him. But finally, it's over. Top pursuit I've ever been in. I mean, it's uh, the longest, the most scariest. Don't want to do another one like that. Police were able to halt this madman's rampage before it claimed a life. The driver later admitted to not remembering most of the chase. But Corporal Pat Riley will never forget the terror of this day, which began with the wail of sirens and almost ended in a ball of fire.